गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज योर टीचर नीले महलावत एंड विल कंटिन्यू विद आवर चैप्टर दैट इज योर चैप्टर नंबर सेवन एवोल्यूशन डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज आर लेक्चर नंबर फाइव एंड आई होप दैट यू हैव नो प्रॉब्लम रिगार्डिंग द लास्ट वीडियोज दैट वी हैव स्टार्टेड सोफा सोफा वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ एविडेंसेज फ्रॉम विच वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट द एवोल्यूशन प्रोसेस अकरिंग right everyone i hope there is no doubt right so let's uh, start with uh, today's topic that is adaptive radiation now dear students we must understand before we go further what do you, what does this term means adaptive radiation right i hope uh, adaptive you understand adaptive means adaptive radiation means basically it is an evolutionary process okay which means that an ancestral shock give rise to new species in a geographical area okay that means if suppose there is a particular species from this particular species newer species will be formed in all possible directions okay they will radiate in all possible directions depending upon the environment in which they live they will undergo different modifications okay so the ancestor is common and then depending upon where they are living they will radiate in different directions they will go in different directions and depending upon the environment in that particular area these spe- this particular species will be modified and will result in the formation of different species the very best example the most important and the best example to fit into this criteria is a darwin's finches okay darwin's finches these uh, this is basically a small bird these finches they are small birds and they are referred to as darwin's finches because they were observed by darwin now darwin observed these small black birds when he went to the galapagos island okay when he was on his voyage when he was moving from one part of the world to the another in his hms beagle ship he noticed that in in galapagos island there are many varieties of birds many varieties of birds are present on this island okay let let me show you what are the different varieties just look at the picture this is a picture that i have taken from your ncert and this shows you four different types of birds the finches the basic criteria that you must notice look at their beak the beak shape is different in every species isn't it so darwin said that there are different varieties of these black finches in the galapagos island and the same island in the same place and he reasoned he reasoned out that after originating from a common ancestor he said that these all finches these all small birds they have come from a common ancestor and then they have radiated to different areas then they moved to different areas and have undergone the different changes resulting in the different shapes of beak okay so they some point of the time they had a common ancestor and later on these birds they went to different areas of the island and depending upon the uh, the atmosphere climate and the feeding conditions there they have undergone they have uh, developed different types of beaks okay since i told you that see they have different types of beak so he said that these different types of beak it is it is an adaptive uh, change the birds they try to adapt depending upon the feeding conditions that were there in that particular area and since they were they were living for a long time in that particular area they were isolated so new kinds of finches have emerged and slowly and gradually since they were living in that particular area it resulted in the formation of new finches okay that survived better in that particular situation let's understand this suppose this this finch it feeds on seeds and that is why it has developed this kind of beak now this finches it feeds on the cactus ground fin- cactus fruits and the flowers and the this vegetarian finches they uh, they feed on the buds of the flowers 
and this woodpecker finch it feeds on the insects since their feeding habits are different since they are eating different types of food materials so because they are eating different kinds of food materials this has resulted resulted the corresponding change in the in their beaks because beaks are employed for eating so you understood since they are feeding different kinds of foods so depending upon their food their beak has modified differently so at one point of the time they were all same but because they were feeding on different kinds of food materials so in the same manner their beaks get modified the similar example is of australian marsupials similar uh, this is another example which will show you adaptive radiation so a number of marsupials marsupial means the pouched mammals okay they also have uh, come to evolve from an ancestral stock in the australia and then they form different species so when more than one adaptive radiation appeared okay when more than one adaptive radiation occurred in in the in the particular geographical area depending upon different habitats then it is called convergent evolution okay then it is called convergent evolution right everyone now placental mammals of australia they show you the parallel evolution in which they have evolved from other marsupial mammals to which they closely resemble or they look similar to so parallel evolution is observed in uh, you can say australian marsupials and placental marsupials let's discuss both of them first i am showing you the this kind of evolution see the marsupials radiation so this was the common ancestor adaptive radiation i am showing you so we they all had a common ancestor here and then they moved to different parts different areas and these areas they were you can say isolated from each other they could not communicate with each other and thus it resulted in the formation of different varieties of marsupials different kinds of marsupials in australia itself like you have tiger cat you have bandit ant eater then marsupial rat kangaroo wombat bandicoot koala marsupial mole solar glider right and tanzanian wolf so these are considered to be have undergone the adaptive radiation they all had a common ancestor at one point of the time and when they moved in different areas different isolated geographical areas then it resulted in the formation of different species there okay everyone so you have two examples of adaptive radiation one is darwin's finches another is australian marsupials let's compare the uh, placental mammals and australian mammals also this is a, a, a mole which is found which is a placental mole and this is a marsupial mole so you can compare these also it is a ant eater in placental ant eater and this is again which is found in australia we can compare the flying squirrel and flying phalanger oslet and tasmanian tiger cat wolf and tasmanian wolf isn't it so they also have undergone the evolution and they are considered to have convergent evolution rather than showing the adaptive radiation they also have a convergent evolution right now then came a very important theory which is called the lamarck's theory of evolution okay everyone so far we have studied number of theories like darwin's theory also the natural selection then the survival of the fittest okay and then alfred wallace also now we come to the lamarck's theory of evolution lamarck said that evolution of life forms had occurred from because of use and disuse of organs he said that evolution of life has occurred because of use and disuse of organs he said the organs which we use more okay the organs that we use more they become more specialized they develop more while the while the parts that we use less or sometimes which we we don't use they become vestigial in body since we are not using them so slowly and gradually they will become become vestigial okay and the organ that we are using frequently more and more that will become more specialized okay similarly the character developed by the organism during its lifetime is passed on to the journey progeny if an organism has a certain character 
and it develops a certain character then slowly it will be passed to its next generation so we can say that slowly the changes that have in been inherited in the organs the organs that are being modified those modifications they are they are transferable from one parent to to its children like the example of giraffe neck like the example of giraffe neck let's see he said if you look at the giraffe the originally the giraffe they were short necked okay originally the giraffe they, ha they they had short neck okay and they were feeding on the leaves of the plants right since they continuously kept on feeding the branches so the leaves of uh, the leaves on the lower branches of the tree they finished and then they started stretching their neck so that they can feed on the upper branches of the plant i hope it, it is clear to everyone ki jo ped the ped ki jo niche ki shakha thi zebras jo hain giraffe jo hain sorry giraffe jo hain ye niche ki branches pe se pattiyon ko khate the lekin kya hua dheere dheere niche ki pattiyan khatam hone lagi to they started stretching their neck so that they can feed the leaves present on the higher branches and because of this continuous stretching the slowly and gradually their neck started increasing and ultimately it it led to the uh, increased size of the neck that we see today in giraffe and these necks they were inherited to their to their progeny also right everyone so this is a best example that the lemark has given and these long necks they have been passed from one generation to another next is a mutation i hope you remember mutation you remember mutation everyone yes mutation is any change in the dna sequence or the base pairs so hugh hugo de veres he proposed the mutation theory of evolution okay this is another theory which was proposed by hugo de veres and this theory is called theory of mutation he worked on evening primrose this is the plant you can see in the picture the flowers i hope you have seen such flowers the plant name of this plant is evening primrose okay he defined mutation as a large heritable changes that are occurring suddenly as we all know we have we have dis discussed mutation in detail in chapter 6 so mutation is is a sudden change that occurs in the base sequences of the dna so if there is a mutation and there and obviously because this this mutation is sudden right everyone understood as he as he told in mutations they are random and they are directionless okay so he believed that the mutations are random and they are directionless okay while the darwin said the variations are small and directional okay darwin said darwin ne kaha tha ki jo uh, changes hoti hain wo small hoti hain aur direction they are along a direction in a particular direction while the mutations that uh, hugo de veri said the mutations which are called they are sudden and they are directionless okay they are directionless okay everyone so they are directionless and they occur suddenly and these sudden changes right these sudden changes they bring about speciation they bring about changes in the in a species so this is called saltation okay this these are referred to as saltations that is single step large mutation okay everyone this is called single step large mutation and i told you that it differs from the darwin's concept darwin said that the mutations they are small and they are they are along a particular direction while the uh, very said d very said that the directions they are sudden the mutations they are sudden and they are directionless okay okay so he believed that such large and single step mutations they will cause speciation that means they will result in the formation of a new species right so the formation of species will be sudden okay as per the hugo de veres 
these species new species will be formed suddenly but according to darwin the new species they will be gradual and they will be formed in a number of generations okay everyone so this was the concept of theory of mutation theory of evolution okay and this concept was given by hugo de veres and sudden mutations which result in the formation of a new species they are referred to as saltations okay everyone they are referred to as saltations so coming to your homework dear students first of all make notes of this topic in your notebook and then you will read the page numbers 133 and 134 underline the important terms that i have talked about make try to find out small questions also try to highlight the important words or right which are given in the black see in your ncert certain words they are given in the black so they are very very important you should be the, the terms the meanings of these words should be very clear okay so i'll hope you will follow and even there even then there is a doubt you will contact me right everyone okay that's all from my side today bye everyone